Hey folks, how's it going? Hope all is well this Saturday. Saturday AM. Uh I just see I see I have an issue here. Let me see if I can fix that. There we go. Uh just the audio a little bit here. I'm I'm trying to listen on the side. I know this is counterproductive, but I'm kind of listening on the side to this uh, Halo Relay Races. So, not sure how that's going to work out, but uh, I'm, I'm a little bit of a geek to have this thing running today. Slayer Death, how's it going? Uh, good to see you here on the chat this Saturday. Uh, it's going well. Uh, yeah, I'm just kind of watching here on the side this uh, Halo Relay Races. It's pretty entertaining, but uh, not super productive for study, but, uh, you know, hey, it's Saturday, so... Anyway, I uh, hope you're doing well. We are 30 days out now, officially 30 days out from my exam. So uh, it's time to get a little sweaty, at least, if we're not already. Uh, good to hear Slayer Death. Glad you're doing well this Saturday. Uh, I'm gonna, I'll probably stream for right now for about an hour, maybe. We'll see. Um, I have some things to do this afternoon. I already ran some errands this morning. That's why I'm kind of getting starting, started late. Uh, trying to knock out a lot of this stuff, you know, early in the weekend so that I have the rest of the weekend to as much as possible to study. Uh, yeah, it's December 1st, day 333. Big three threes of, um, of streams on this journey. Uh, Slayer that says, just launched a big client project yesterday. Well... The fact that you're here indicates that uh, it must be going okay because you're not on a big conference call or in a, you know, uh, what do we call them sometimes? I hear a war room <laughs> or something like that, so that's good. Unfortunately, some full of bugs. I only did some bits and pieces last minute. Gotcha. Hey, it happens, man. There's never enough time. Never enough time, it seems. So yeah, pulling up the target dates, folks, uh, as many of you may know, today is my deadline to finish whatever we're going to finish in NetworkLessons.com. And tomorrow I start with the Evolving Technologies Guide. Pretty excited about that, actually. Uh, but anytime I start something new or a new phase, I get pretty excited about it. But let me show you where I'm at on Network Lessons. Um, we, you know, I finished yesterday the EEM. And I started in PFR, which is performance routing. This is the last section of network optimization I'm trying to finish. So, uh, so far, so good. I uh, went over, uh, they called it, it's interesting. I'm not sure when this lesson came out. Usually it'll say here. Like you can usually tell by some of the forum replies. But my point is that this was initially called OER, Optimized Edge Routing, which I know it's PFR now. I don't know how it's labeled in the actual exam, if they're going to throw a question out about OER, but at least now I know what it, OER is. It's the old name for PFR. And I also noticed when I did a I looked through here, this had like a topology and everything, but not really anything that I could lab. I thought it would, but it really doesn't. I know this is more in depth. So I found this online. Uh, what's going on here with my windows? So I found this online. I posted it in the Discord channel. This is actually a lab that Cisco is on the Cisco Wiki. It's not a full lab, but it should be everything I need. So I decided to work on this, and yesterday I started the build. I didn't finish it, so we're going to try to at least finish it here on stream today. And I'm doing this in Azure because it's 10, uh, 11 routers, which I know I can do on this iMac, but it's a bit much. So uh, let's start up the, the VM. I'm using the not-so-big VM today. Because I noticed that big VM, man, it really does chew up my credits. 
more than I anticipated, I guess. So. I haven't eaten yet today, folks, so that's why I'm going to make this stream short. I've got some air and some places to go. I think we have to leave about 1.30-ish, and I have not had lunch or anything to eat, so. But I am on keto. A keto diet, which basically takes away a lot of your hunger. It's kind of how it uh, works its magic. Shouldn't take us too long before we can actually... Actually, I want to log in to the IP address itself. Here we go. Gave me a new public IP. Just going to hit that. It won't take it long to boot up. I should have booted up before the stream started, but I just uh, have been busy this morning. So we're going to do, uh, going to get logged into the lab. And yeah, that's where we're at. So tomorrow I start the Evolving Technologies Guide, reading and reviewing and doing some of the hands-on exercises. And I'll be doing that. My goal is to finish by the 10th. Which gives me, how many days does that give me, really? It's really like 11 full days. So this is actually 12-1. We're going to, no, 12-2. That's right. That's right. Today is 12-1. So 12-2. Uh, can you just show me a calendar? Mac OS X. Thank you. Um, so yeah, two through the tenth. So that's hmm, that's an entire week, including the following Monday. All right. So mapping out my schedule here. Thirty days ago. How are we looking? Thirty days out. We're looking pretty good. Um, I'm setting aside eleventh through the thirtieth as kind of study hall time. So that's open time. That's a chance to go back and do reviews of all the material. My plan is on that, and I'm glad I'm talking about this now because I want to solidify this a little more. Here, here's what's happening. Um, I, I'm taking a little trip around, you know, during that holiday week, but I have some days off in December. I think I have three days. Um, like, you know, 19, 20, 21st. I think I have these three completely off, PT, personal time off. So while I am losing days to travel, I'm gaining a lot of time to... So I'm going to count this basically as regular days, study days. So I'm looking at uh, one, two, you know, two weeks really. So two weeks of scramble slash um, review slash any labs I feel like I need to do. I'll go ahead and fire up those labs just to solidify. I tell you, IPv6 NAT is something I would like to. As a matter of fact, I should make, I should start making a hit list. Well, what I should do, to be honest, folks, is what we're going to do is on the 12.10... I'm going to do a re-evaluation and hit list. And I did this last after the last fail, so it's been a while. But what I use, what tool I use for that is my version of the blueprint. So I have basically a copy of the entire written blueprint in Excel. It's out there on GitHub. Link's up there if you want to uh, use it, copy it, modify it. But I have a rating system here, and what I'm going to do is each time I sort of reset, I come back here and I regrade myself. And notice all these C's, so I'm going to come back, check these C's, make sure they're either B's or A's, and then uh, review all the C areas. That's what we're going to do the last two weeks. We're going to hit these, uh, all these C's. That's my strat. Those are my strats going forward. 
So let's see, this should have booted up by now. It has. Let's load the PFR lab. I created a new lab for this just because, I don't know, I wanted to really, fo this is new for me. I've never labbed this. I've seen it demoed. Like I've seen Cisco actually, I've been to a Cisco demonstration of this. Let's start all the nodes. I mean, it would take a couple of starts to really get, there we go. All but router nine, he's being obstinate. Maybe, maybe, yeah, okay. So here's the, the way I understand this lab. Let me just kind of go over this for myself and for any viewers here of how this is set up. So the idea behind this lab, and you can actually, you know, this is cool, I can show I normally like a lot of what I've been doing is out of INE workbook or the networklessons.com material, which for obvious reasons I don't show on screen. I respect the copyrights of that and the work. And, you know, um, I'm just kind of documenting my journey, right? My own uh, struggle through the labs. So I change up the IP addresses. Typically, I'll change up uh, some of the configurations. Um, and I don't show this on, but I could do that here because this is cisco.com. And it goes back a ways, but it should be enough. As a matter of fact, one of the folks on the networklessons.com forum said, you know, because they asked, they asked Renee, hey, Renee, can you post like you do for most all of your lessons? Can you actually post your configurations? And he did not. So someone in the, on the forum is like hey no problem just go to this link which again is another benefit of you folks using subscribing to networklessons.com you get all the forum comments because the forum's not free um, but this is a topology and what's going on here is red so this is going to be our master and these are going to be four and five are going to be our pfr border routers this is the server and this is the client. So the clients have a single router and this router is going to send traffic towards the server. And we have two service providers. So this would be, you know, like a pretty typical setup of PFR, I'm assuming. And yeah, this I haven't done any of the PFR configuration yet. Um, and that level of detail is not exactly here, but there you have the verification, you have some of the configuration here. So we just have to get routing working, which I mostly have. Uh, I had to kind of figure that out on my own. So what I did here is OSPF. And I think here, and I did BGP peerings here. So you got AS100, 65s, there's a 1s, there's a 2s, there's a 3. I've got all that set up. I think all my route peerings are set up, but I don't have full reachability yet. And I think it has to do with, I think that's because of an issue here. I wonder, am I redistributing OSPF here? I think I am. Redistribute OSPF1. That's right. Uh, you know what? I do need to do something else here. Redistribute OSPF1. It's not going to redistribute external routes by default. Match external internal. Yeah, that's true. I do need to do that. Router of EGP 6502, I believe. Yeah. Redistribute OSPF1 external and internal. 
Oh, match. Oops. Can't spell. Match. And the reason I'm doing that is because uh, this server here is not, routing is not enabled. And I have a static route to this loopback. And I'm redistributing that into OSPF. So it's basically a OE2, I think. So on BGP, we need to tell them to redistribute that, right? So on router 6, let's check our routing now. Uh, is up-to-date certification port for all you folk in the networking space? You know, that's a good question, Slayer, Darth. Um, there's been a lot of discussion about that. I've actually considered that because what happens with the CC, with this, all the Cisco certifications is they're all, they all expire within either two or three years. Uh, the CCIE, for example, expires after two years. So I've already thought, you know, post CCIE, post obtaining the CCIE routing and switching written, I don't even want to think about my life after that. But, uh, <laughs> you know, because so much is going into getting the CCIE routing and switching. But I really want to drift into more uh, cloud and automation programmability. You know, I want to be Dimitri Fiegel when I grow up. Uh, so does that mean, one, that's going to mean that I'm going to need to be sure that I recertify every two years, which is a lot of effort for me anyway. Like that means there's a couple of ways to recertify. Um, as a developer, right, when people tell me you need certifications to be a good developer, I think a lot of time they're purely for show. Yeah, I'm not sure how that works for a developer. Um, I will say that for... Typical network infrastructure jobs, networking jobs, uh, whether you're architect or engineer or operator, uh, certifications, the Cisco certifications carry a lot of weight compared to a lot of other industry certifications. I don't know how well developed they are in the developer space. Like Microsoft's early certification program was considered by many to be a joke. So no matter how much uh, you worked on uh, Microsoft certifications, they had very little merit uh, to hiring, you know, directors. Uh, Cisco, on the other hand, is, has very, you know, a pretty good reputation uh, at all levels. So it, I'd say for most people it means something. There are cheaters, of course, like everything, but in general... Um, it's, it's definitely helpful for getting your foot in the door in the networking space. That probably depends on how specialized the cert is. For example, I probably wouldn't mind doing this CompTIA Linux cert. Yeah, CompTIA has pretty good, uh, rep, but Cisco exams are just, have a good reputation in terms of their difficulty, especially, uh, you know, professional expert level. It still has a really good reputation in the industry in terms of, wow, if you achieve the CCIE, that means something. Like, uh, even if you achieved it in routing and switching, but you apply for a job in the service provider space, you know, that's a different discipline. Still, the CCIE actually carries a lot of weight, and the CCDE, I uh, must add, in terms of just your ability to achieve it because it's so difficult. Like the amount of dedication, study, commitment, um, research, uh, time. I mean, it's just, it's a huge commitment. And just being able to say, I achieved it, you know, uh, carries a lot of weight, I think. Good question, though. So we've got this, uh, let's check our BGP router. Oh. Our interfaces are not all up, so we need to fix that, I think. Router 4 needs, uh, let's, yeah, let's check everything. 
let's just go through and open up all these. Yeah, wonderful PMs in my current age said that without attending university, I would never be a good developer. And I just wrote, yeah, that's a different story, I think. I think universities have a lot of challenges these days, not just in the IT industry, but in other industries as well. Um, a lot of people are challenging the old notions. I debated getting my degree because I skipped college after high school uh my grandfather owned a business i wanted to get right into that business there it was technology business and later i kind of took a turn where i thought that i wanted to be a manager you know in order to make more money i had to either become a manager or sales and i decided to go the manager route later i changed that decision years later but in order to go the management route at least where i was working a degree was important and i don't regret getting a bachelor's degree mine was in it business management it it has not really helped my career up to this point if i ever do go into, into management again um, i think it will be a benefit to my career I don't think I, I will ever do that uh, in terms of managing um, for a, cor a corporation. <coughs> However, I do in the future am considering starting a business. And in that case, the uh, business management degree will, I think, help me a lot in terms of um, accounting, it took a lot of accounting to get that degree. Uh, macro, microeconomics, marketing. Um, I learned a lot of statistics. That's actually has helped me in my career and doing, you know, like PFR involves statistics. And you can learn it outside of college, but um, they force you to do it in college and you resist. But uh, it was one of the more difficult courses I took, but I don't regret it. I actually really enjoyed it. Uh, as you say here, uh, one of our old, uh, I'm debating between doing either CS or EE, but I'm leaning towards EE as I want to get more into hardware side of things. Gotcha. Computer science or EE. Yeah, so some of the purely uh, technical, right? Yeah, if you're ever considering uh, going solo as a consultant or um, starting a business one day, like writing an app and trying to sell and market your app or anything like that, then business management might even appeal to you. Um, that's a generic enough degree, too, where it can carry merit in a lot of different directions, you know? management, sales, uh, or, you know, becoming a business owner or entrepreneur, any entrepreneurial endeavors. Investing, money management, all that's covered in, you know. But it's devoted towards IT, so I actually had covered all the disciplines. Like I had a course on databases. I had a course on programming, which I, you know, in the past I've never worked on but I plan to get more into that in the future it covers networking it covers um, a lot of the different discipline it covers project management so you get a little slice of all the different IT disciplines with a business management degree uh, okay my friend studied electrical engineering one top engineer in the UK really interested in what he studied I'm fascinated by that too uh, I actually had a really good director slash boss when I was also a manager um, at a previous job who that was his degree was in electrical engineering he didn't really use it at all in any of his you know I mean you could get a degree for no other reason you can pay money and go get a degree for something that just is of interest to you just to learn it 
Like, there's no rule that says you have to go choose a degree or work out money for a degree because you're trying to get a job for that degree. Um, I knew a guy who got, I know a lot of people who got degrees in areas and learned a lot because they loved it. And they actually never worked in that area. Um, I would love to go get a degree on philosophy just so that I could study and talk to professors, go to class. I mean, I love philosophy, but I, how many people can ever get a decent paying job doing that? You know what I mean? Yeah, the only modest my friend didn't enjoy the course involved seeing job, and of course that would be great for you, right? Uh, let's look at our routing here. This has OSPF, show IP interface brief. Uh, oh, interface is down. Looks like I'm going to have to open a lot of shut interfaces. That's a bummer. Yeah, I know someone once uh, told me he had a degree, a master's degree in military history. It's not that you couldn't ever get a job doing that. You know, I mean, he that's a very specialized field. And he did it because he loved it. Like, he loved history. He loved reading about history. Um, he was not working in that field. Had never worked in that field. And it's because of the pay, you know. He could make more money doing IT. And he worked in IT. Um, so... They also do MATLAB, which is obviously ridiculously overpriced for individuals, yeah. MATLAB, you're referring to um, like the, like I use something, I I had to, so any college, pretty much any college degree, you got to take math, right, and in, in your language courses. Um... Isn't MATLAB like a simulator or a... I think... Uh, yeah, so... It's interesting. Our, one cool thing about the degree I took is I got access to a lot of... Uh, like, we would do homework. I think we did it in MATLAB. Uh, sometimes we would have to do our homework in here, and we got free access to it as part of the tuition. Of course, we paid for it. It's not like it was free. I mean, you're paying for it one way or the other. Uh, got access to a lot of uh, research sites also. I mean, if, it, if I didn't have so, much, like, so many papers to write and homework to do, I would have loved to just have access to all that research and just go through it on my own time, you know, but there's a lot of resources like that, right, where you only have access to it through the university because it's so expensive. Yeah, I think it's used for uh, tasks like graph visualization, yeah. That's like, imagine all the university students who are at MIT and get to work on the supercomputers, you know. That must be pretty darn cool. Like they probably still have, I know uh, my sister has a degree, a master's degree in, um, what's it called? Microscopy. And yeah, she worked on a lot of micro big microscopes, high power microscopes, but you know, uh, like the supercomputers, you had to rent time, or you had to reserve time on them, and, you know, the time you got was very limited, and you had to really plan your study time. I would love to work in, like, astronomy, or, or be able to take a... I'd love to take a, you know, sign up for a degree... If time was unlimited, right, 
if time were no object, uh, philosophy, astronomy, uh, physics, I, I just loved to learn everything. I was one of the nerds in school who sat up in the front of class and just loved to listen to the chemistry teacher, you know, like, I know. Uh, yeah, I think it's a, this is a free Linux alternative called New Octave. Oh, okay. Okay, all our interfaces should be up. Okay, so now show IP route. It's funny how I don't own a Mac and have used Macs in previous jobs and my current job, yet I know more about how to use a Mac than, say, colleagues who have used a Mac pretty much their whole lives. I know, right? Yes, Larry Darth. In my case, like, uh, my transition in IT was... So I had a brief stint at a job where I did graphics design and I used a Mac. That was the first time I ever used a Mac and it was only for like a few months. Other than that, I've, I had always been Windows until I started doing consulting and security engagements, pen testing, things like that. And that's when I switched to Linux. So I went Windows, Linux, and then Mac. Um, that, that's my evolution and I'm a total Mac fanboy, Apple fanboy, but yes, I can hop in to bash shell and do all the Linux stuff, which is great. Uh, but I know a lot of people don't know any of that. Uh, but, but I've jumped back and forth between Windows and Mac at work. I don't bring my own machines in. Yeah, same here. Now I have, when I've left a job. Like a previous job I left, I used, uh, I'd been issued a Mac, MacBook Pro. And when I left, I asked if I could purchase, because it was beyond warranty and everything. And so I've done that before. Um, all right, so we've got, I just love all, th all things computers, man. I remember OS2. I remember being in love with OS2 and not really having access to it. IBM OS2 back when Windows was just becoming king. DOS was man in OS2. You could actually create uh, multiple sessions, multiple desktops, and log on with completely separate uh, IPX slash netware login account something that you wouldn't dream of being able to do on a windows machine yeah i use ubuntu and windows at home and also use CentOS on other client projects so trust the arch and the hardware has been faulty okay i think i've i've worked very little with CentOS. uh my main squeeze for the longest time was fedora um so when i uh actually converted a work laptop um, I went cold turkey to learn Linux, so I wiped my Windows, well, I, I imaged it, my work laptop. I imaged the Windows OS, um, wiped it, booted to Fedora, and then um, ran VirtualBox and, imp and converted my Windows disk image to a VirtualBox image uh, disk, and then just mounted it to a VirtualBox OS because I still had Windows programs I had to run. They would not run in Linux natively. So, um, and it was Fedora. That was, you know, I think I tried Ubuntu and I was like, this is not super hardcore. Um, and I think I had some issues with wireless drivers. That was the biggest complaint for me was getting wireless drivers to work on my laptop. Uh, no, dude, not knowing not know how to use a Linux command or anything like that. Cruncher, what the Arch fanboys will tell you. Oh, yeah. Arch tends to be, claim to be pretty hardcore. Um, all right, so let's see. We should, on Router 2 at least. Okay, we've got all kinds of routes on Router 2, and we've got OSPF routes. So that's good. Let's peel this off. I used to listen to a lot of, uh, I don't do it as much anymore because of time, 
But I used to listen to a lot of uh, Linux podcasts. Like, I loved it so much. Like, I would just, I couldn't get enough. When I first discovered Linux, like, I came, I became a Linux lover. Like, I couldn't get enough of it, you know? Like, I spent all my free time. Like, I even tried to compile my own kernel at one point on vacation. Um, I had trouble again with the wireless driver, so... Something tells me you use Kali now if you do a lot of pen... Uh, I don't do that kind of work anymore. Um, I don't know if you remember, before Kali, there was another distro. Well, there have been a few distros a lot of pen testers would use. Uh, what was it called? It was really co cool. It had Nessus. It had a lot of different things in there, but it was called something else, but they don't... It was open source. It's discontinued now. No, it was... Take that back. Uh, it was popular at the time with pen testers, and it was it became commercial, which meant that it immediately lost like a lot of support. I can't remember the name of the distro though. It used to be free. This is going back years since I've done that kind of work, though, folks. Uh, I've been focused really on networking now for for a long time. Just, just network, a uh, virtualization. I did a lot of, um, that's like my relationship with IRC, really. Yeah, I never really got on IRC, even though all the open source guys and gals were on IRC. Yeah, exactly. All cool kids hop on IRC. I came close to doing that at the time when I was really into Linux. In fact, I considered getting the CompTIA Linux Plus is what it was called at the time, I think. Um, I just never did it. I, I actually came to a crossroads, a fork in the road, because I was working on CCNA at the time, and I'm like, you know what? I'm learning so much about Linux. I really love it. Should I? This is common with us in IT, right? We, we get these. We're like little uh, kids sometimes um, with um, that need, you know, ADHD meds, because we're like, oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this. Um, that's great. Those impulses aren't to be, you know, stifled necessarily all the way, but I will say in my career, I regret not being more focused on a particular track. You know, I wish I would have started networking and working on my CCIE earlier. Uh, at one time I almost shifted gears over to Linux, even though I was deep into the CCNA. Um, so I came to Fork in the Road and I'm like, you know what? I need to choose because I can't become a really high level specialist at both. I don't need to completely neglect Linux and I still use it a lot. Like now I'm running, uh, in the discord, we're talking about WSL on Windows, Windows subsystem for Linux and it works great. So I'm using Ubuntu now on my Windows 10 work machine. Uh, but all my time right now is pretty much devoted to, so that was about the point I was about to jump on IRC and I was like, you know what? I need to focus here. Um, let's see, ping 10.4.4.4. Okay. I have reachability there in our OSPF domain. So let's see in our border router, if we can reach around... I should have BGP routes, and I don't. So BGP is not redistributing. Excuse me. Show BGP IP before unicast summary. Okay, I have prefixes here. So I'm learning prefixes from 10.4.6.8, which is good. Or 8.6. I'm learning six prefixes, and I'm learning a prefix from him. Maybe I'm not redistributing it because I am IBGP? 
I run Windows 10 Dose Cell on both my home and work machines. As you said, it works great. Some issues, but not too bad. Yeah, I've seen some. I'm still new on it, so like the permissions can be a little bit weird, but ability to run binaries commands in your Windows path from the Dose is a nice stuff. It is. It really is. Like I debated going the Docker route, but then I'm like, well, WSL, man, I could just run, you know, run that. And I've been really happy with it, especially for Git, because I use Git all day long on my Windows boxes. I'm glad to see Microsoft now kind of seeding, now that they're the richest company in the world kind of seeding some credit to Linux. Like in the past, Microsoft was all Linux versus Microsoft and Linux people were Linux versus Microsoft. But I think our world has changed for the better where it's not, that's not it anymore. It's not us versus them. It's, you know, how do we get our technology deployed or how do we get our um, application deployed? Uh, what platforms do we deploy it to? What browsers do we deploy it to? You know, it's not so much. It's more about the tools. And you can run Linux on Windows now. And you can run Windows on Linux now, you know. Uh, virtualized, but. And so many of us these days work out of multiple operating systems by necessity. So. It's it's interesting. I work uh, Slayer Darth. I work a lot in my day day to day job in Azure, right? Azure Cloud, and it's amazing the amount of support that is there for Linux. Um, the integration with uh, deployments that you can use with containers and with, I mean, Microsoft is not. They're offering as much support as they can in in Azure for. Or Linux deployments and Linux VMs and uh, Linux operating system itself. As a matter of fact, uh, I don't know if you're aware, but if I go to shell.azure.com, now this is interesting. I want to point something out. This is how much Microsoft has embraced Linux. Uh, I think mine is still set to. Yeah, so I can select for my Cloud Shell to be either Bash or PowerShell. Um, and what's interesting is that even if you select, like there's two sort of command sets for, you know, you can fire up a VM or deploy something in Azure using the shell. You do just about everything in the shell. Um, is right now the Bash commands and the PowerShell commands are different. But what uh, Microsoft is doing is in the future, all the Azure PowerShell commands are going to be based on the Bash commands. So A A Z law, uh, you know, uh, like this will list out like all the commands you could do A Z. So they're actually going to go the Bash route. Like Bash is going to be sort of the preferred language structure going forward, uh, which I think is really cool. Okay, so let's look at our BGP here, router 8. Our main thing here is I just want full reachability before lunch. Because uh, after I get back this evening from, we got a couple of social things, uh, family things we're going to be doing. Um, I want to make sure I have full reachability so we can actually do this PFR uh, router configuration. And we're going to run some traffic through. I don't know how I'm going to do that yet. This server designated here is actually Cisco iOS, but I may throw a Ubuntu box here. And just to generate traffic, one thing that I've been told about performance routing is that you have to be patient. It takes a while for PFR to kick in, kind of like NTP, right? You configure NTP and you just sit there and wait for it to algorithm algorithmically sort of converge uh that's the same with pfr it's just going to sit so um we have to be patient with this lab today folks that's all i'm saying 
Uh, so let's look at router 10. Show IP protocol. And we're running BGP. Show BGP IPv4. Unicast. So it looks like I'm only getting this local route. And I'm not really learning any. Wait a second, 20 is here. 30, 100, these are all directly connected. Yeah, so my IBGP, I got a feeling my problem is here. Six is not advertising. No, eight is. Okay, let's turn on soft configuration. Uh, router BGP 100. Neighbor 100.8.10.10. Soft reconfiguration inbound. And we're going to do the same with our other neighbor, neighbor. 100.4.8.6 soft configuration inbound and we're going to clear IP BGP. we're just going to clear the process and then we're going to do show BGP IPv4 unicast neighbor um, 100.4.8.6 received routes Okay, so we're getting 10.1, 10.1.2.3, 10 .1 okay, so he's getting all these routes. And what is he sending? Show BGP IPv4 unicast neighbor. 100.8.10.10 advertised. Uh, show. Oh, BGP. Hello. I have a problem with uh, transposing numbers or, and characters. All right, so we're not advertising anything. Okay, I could understand if. I can understand. This should automatically redistribute from IBGP to EBGP. I'm not sure why it's not doing that. And I want to understand this. Like, do I have to? I should not have to. Uh, it's probably the other way around. I know this sounds simple. It makes uh, I sound like a noob here, but so on. I on BGP redistribution. Is it just one way? Like I'm only going to redistribute automatically eBGP into iBGP, but not iBGP into eBGP. Sounds like a very fundamental thing to know that for some reason I don't seem to know. BGP redistribution. Let's just do a real simple search here. Uh, right, by default, IBGP redistribution to IGP is disabled, correct. That makes a lot of sense, actually. I want to talk about creating some loops. Okay, when BGP is redistributed into an IGP. Okay, that's good. That's a different use case, though. Oh, not this site. No, not this spammy site. Spammy site alert. 
I almost want to block network computing for my... Uh, let's see, because there's an all this path, right? Uh, that also, IBGP routing loop. Ensure that the IBGP peering so cannot loop by requiring a loop free. One of the keys. Is that to keep BGP learn routes within BGP? It actually looks like a decent like summary article, but it's just on that spammy site, man. Network solutions. Um. Okay. IBGP. Redistribute IBGP into EBGP. Okay, this might be up our alley here. Yeah, I don't want to advertise using network command. Advertise itself as a next top for that and also set OSPF admin. Oh, I have a next top problem. Yep. Uh, let's look at the routing table here. Uh, this would be, yeah, router 8, show. Star valid, uh, internal. And this is, um, question is, is he advertising to router 6, the 30? Okay, he is getting the 30. And then is router six advertising that to router four? Let's see. Show BGP IV V4 uni neighbor 10.4.6.6 advertised. Oh, uh, 10.4.6. Oh, is that the problem? Show BGP IP4 uni sum. I used the wrong address. 10.4.6.4, right. It's not advertising them. Why is it not advertising? Um, hmm, what is the next top here? Hmm. Some issues, uh, let's see. Mentors, sup fam, good to see you. Grind and land, just finished IPsec bid for HTB Hawk walkthrough. Now I wanna break some stuff, lol. 
HTB Hawk. What is, uh, tell me more about that, Mentors. Maybe you can help me with a problem, too. I got a BGP problem here. And this sounds real simple. Um, and I feel like a dunce not knowing this. Oh, hack the box. Gotcha. So here's my topology, Mentors. I've got EBGP, EBGP, IBGP. And my, <clears throat> I'm not getting redistribution of IBGP into EBGP on either side of this. And I'm not sure why. So I've got, for example, router six, show, run, section BGP. I've just got two neighbors to find. That's it. And if I look at my show BGP P4 unicast summary, oh, I just did that. But, you know, I'm, I'm getting prefixes, but I'm not advertising them out. Oh, here we go. IBGP learn route, not advertise at eBGP. Might be the same doc. No, it says a different doc. Um, oh, the answer is here. Troubleshoot when BGP routes are not advertised. Ooh, there's an article dedicated to this very subject. Uh, let's see, routes announced. Okay, unable to announce IBGP learn routes. BGP route synchronization enabled. Don't tell me it's enabled by default. I thought it was disabled by default. Man, this would be the problem for sure. Assume that IGP, because I'm not running IGP here. I am not running IGP here. A uh, nice article as well. Let me check it out, Mentors. Mentors, always with a good link. Yeah. Yeah, I think we opened this one a little earlier. That's true. Yeah, we, we sure did. This is a good one, man. So I'm going to post these both of these. Uh, they're in the chat, but I'm just going to add some uh, basic IBGP to EBGP troubleshooting links. I'm going to add this for posterity because you know what? I have a feeling... I might be coming back to this in the future. That's why I put them in the agendas, because this is searchable on the GitHub. So thank you for that, mentors. Always uh, willing to help a hand. Appreciate it, my friend. I think this is a case. Pretty sure this is a case of the synchronization problem, because... Now, let's see. Let's see. Let me... Uh, what if I ran an IBGP or an IGP here? Let's do that just for grins. Let's do that just for uh, grins here. Uh, where was the... Go to top. Ah, uh, it does not have best route, right? So that does look to be the case. Let's look at the route. Uh, for example, let's pick one. Uh, let's pick... Uh, 100.8.10.0, advertising to... Router six. Yeah, man, mentors, we had some great uh, philosophical discussions about life, the universe, and everything, really. 
By the way, guys, trivia question. What is the answer to that life? What is the answer to the question of life, the universe, and everything? Who knows? One question here. Ballot best. This is the only one that's best. So these are learned, but they're not selected as best. Uh, let's look. Okay, show IP protocols. Beautiful day here in Florida. It's warm once again. Yeah, I know, man. It is. The answer is enjoy the journey and hold on to wild and crazy ride. All right, this was kind of an insider question, but, uh, well, not really insider, but. Um, this, is, this is kind of a meme, really. Yes, Big Abe, you got it right, 42. <laughs> uh, that's from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. If y'all have never seen this movie, uh, I don't think I've ever seen the movie, actually. I've read the book like twice. It's, it's a short read. It's a hilarious book. Uh, yeah, gang is all here, Big, Big Abe in the house. Uh, Big Abe got the answer. It's funny when we had to come up at our job at, at our office, we we form did some team forming, and we had to actually vote on our team name. And forty two is our team name because we're the answer to life, the universe, and everything. <laughs> like we have T-shirts, we have stickers. Uh, talk about some geeks, man. Okay, I GP synchronization is disabled. Okay, so that's not the problem. BGP synchronization is enabled by default in Cisco iOS. Not anymore, I don't think. Um, so that's not the problem. If the routes are connected with two links and the routes are learned through BGP, the floating static routes are installed in the routing table. This occurs if the static routes are just, uh, if the BGP routes come back online. No, that's not the case here. This issue can be solved if you remove the redistribute static command or BGP process to avoid priority. Okay, that's not our scenario here. Uh, let's see if this router can reach uh, show IP route show BGP IPv4 unicast neighbor um, 10.4.6. No, 10.4.8.6 received routes. Is this labeled wrong? Let's see. Show IP interface brief. This was not intended to be a BGP lab, folks, but it's okay that it's turning out that way. I don't mind. 10.4.6. Uh, the label is a little off, I guess. This should really be like 10.6.8. Uh, and this should be 10.7.9. All right, let's fix that. Interface GI01, IP address 100.6.8.6. And show run section BGP. Router BGP 100, no neighbor 10.4.8.8 remote AS100. We're going to do neighbor. 10.6.8.8 remote AS100. And let's go over to router 8 now and fix that as well.
Um, no neighbor 100.4. Uh, router BGP 100, no neighbor 100.4.8.6, remote AS 100, neighbor 100.6.8.6, remote AS 100, and neighbor 100. Eight, no, 6.8.6, .6, soft reconfiguration inbound. Just, just trying to get reachability, folks. Full reachability in this topology for the purposes of building a PFR. So, just we, we're stuck here on reachability through our BGP clouds here for some reason. Uh, show BGP IP for uni sum. Idle ping 100.6.8.6. Ah, my interface. Interface GI01, IP address 100.6.8.8, do ping 100.6.8.6, yeah. Okay, good, so now we should get a neighborship here. Show BGP IP for Unisum. Okay, we we have a neighborship now. Or do we? No, we don't. Let's just clear IP BGP star. Four six four is up. Show run section BGP. Ping 10.6.8.8. Oh, okay. It's a problem. Um, show run interface J01. Router 8, show run interface GI01. 100, 6688, 100, 6688, ping 100, 6688, okay. Do we not fix BGP here? Oh, we can, oh, it's 10, that's why. Uh, no neighbor, oops, 6.8.8, .8, remote AS100. Router BGP 100, no neighbor 10.6.8.8 remote AS100, and no neighbor 100.4.8.8 remote AS100, neighbor 10.100.6.8.8 remote AS100. Okay. That should fix that. We should get BGP going here. There we go. So this router should be able to ping 10.4.5.2, for example. Mm. Ping 10.4.5.4. 10.4.5.4. Dot five. Oh, are these interfaces up? Wow, we got other other issues here. We should be running OSPF here. We are ping ten dot four dot five dot four. Ping 10.4.5.2. Okay. 
show IP route. 10.4.5.4. Uh, they don't have the routes yet. As an eBGP prefix advertised to an iBGP neighbor, it may rise with the NLRI passing validity check, next stop reachability check. Advertised to other V. The most common is next stop self, right? IVGPers do not modify the next top address if the NLRI has a next top address other than zero. I wondered if that was it. I think you are right. I believe you are correct, sir. So when we go from EBGP to IBGP, we need to change the next stop self because otherwise he has no eight has no idea how to get to those. He's receiving the routes, but they are invalid. Thank you, sir. You are right, mentors. Show run section BGP. So all we need to do is on this neighbor, neighbor 100.6.8.8 router BGP 100. Reference article. Thank you, sir. Awesome. Next stop self. That's the issue. That is the problem. I've done a lab on this before. It's just been a while. Router BGP 100. Neighbor 100.6.8.6. Next stop self. So let's clear IPBGP star. Now to show BGP IP for unicast. Okay, these are still not marked valid. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, they're still, oh, they're valid. Okay, ping. Show BGP IP4 unicast. Okay, these are valid and best. Um, So when we look at show BGP IP4 unicast neighbor 10.6.8.8 advertised 100. I keep wanting to put 10. Okay, so we're advertising all these with us as a next hop. I think we need to do that the other way too, don't we? Yeah. Take a look. Then I got to get some lunch, folks. Router BGP 100. Neighbor. Next stop self. Let's do the same this way. Show Oh, we've got best now. Uh router BGP one hundred. Be capped after lunch VR POC. Yeah, man. Um I have to run, so after lunch, I have some Family things to do, and then I'll probably be back this evening, though, sometime this evening, to knock out the PFR, because today's my deadline on network lessons. So I want to get through the PFR, and if I have any time left, uh, go back to 
um, QoS. Neighbor 100.8.10.10. Next top self. All right, let's do that down here as well. We've got uh, router seven and nine. Router uh, interface J01, IP address 100.7.9.7. Uh, sounds good, man. I'm putting my Christmas lights with the wife. Yes, get start early anyhow and I will definitely check back in sounds good yeah I'm gonna be doing the same today uh let's see neighbor 10 oh no neighbor dot five dot nine dot nine no huh Oh, router BGP 200, no neighbor. Neighbor 100.7.9.9, remote AS 200. Neighbor 100.7.9.9, next hop self. And neighbor 10.5.7.5, next hop self. Because we wanted to act basically as an... Uh, I'll be back. Might even try to build that lab. So, all right, man. I'll publish this. I'll definitely publish this to the Discord because this is um, a Cisco lab. I'll be back when you get back from lunch as well. Might even try to build that lab. That's awesome, dude. PFR, man. I've never labbed it before. It's This is brand new territory for me. We have to see the circus meetup before Christmas we gave. Yeah, man. Interface Jazz 01. IP address 100.7.9.9. Before I go to lunch, though, man, I want to make sure I get this working so I can start out this afternoon, uh, hit the ground running. So let's ping 100.7.9.7. We can uh, show run section bgp router bgp 200 no neighbor mode as 200 and it's going to be neighbor 100.7.9.7 remote as 200 neighbor 100.7.9.7 next up self and neighbor 100.9.10.10 next up so okay let's see if we got reachability now folks we're just gonna confidently drop over here to router 2 look at that I'm down for that I plan to do retake my written in January as part of personal development oh awesome okay your goals right I speed low drag. Hoorah. Land is moving the hell out of me. He's a devil dog in spirit. <laughs> Simplified. Do or die. You got it, man. You know it. Okay, so I'm seeing goodness here with the exception. These routes are not getting that way. And I think it's because the same thing over here in router 10. Uh, I probably need to clear. And we're going to do neighbor uh, router, neighbor 100.8.10.8, next hop self, okay, clear IP BGP star, oh yeah. Now we're getting our BGP routes. And I want to see 30 over here. Uh, let's, we probably clear. 
clear. Um, let's clear on our uh, ISP routers, quote unquote. Uh, am I getting BGP over here on four? Show IP route. Okay, I'm learning my 30s over here. That's good. January 2019 is going to be a great time for many of us. Big A, Portland, DC, going to pass that written. Yeah, man. Hopefully, Tony and I get those numbers in January. If not, we can all lab once again and mind melt with each other and do it all over again. You know it. Best of luck, my man. You got this. Thank you, sir. Yeah. January's going to be big. Uh, what do we have here? Show IP route. Okay, we're getting close here, folks. Um... He's learning 30. He has not learned 20. I think I need to do a um, show run section. Ah, redistribute static. I also need to do connected here. Router BGP 6503 redistribute static. And we should be connected. Because he's not running any routing protocols except for BGP. There we go. And now... Oh, we're not... Are we redistributing back into OSPF? Uh, redistribute OSPF1. Oh, we're not, are we? That's the problem. Router OSPF1. Redistribute BGP. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. I think we're just uh, 6501 subnets. All right, we're getting them here. Now, how about here? Yeah, there we go. Let's do it on five as well. Router OSPF one, redistribute. BGP 65002 subnets. And, nice, so this is ping 30.1.0.11. Yeah. Uh, let's go from the other end. Ping 10.1.1.1. Real ambitious here. Uh, ping 10.4.5.4. Okay. Ping 10.5.5.5. Yay. Ping 10.1.2.2. Okay. So something is happening here. Oh, let's look at router five. Section BGP. Okay, redistributing OSPF one match internal external. Ping 10.1.1.1. Okay. This must be a an issue here. Ping 10.1.1.1. Okay. 
I think this is just a static route. Run interface jet zero one. And then show run include route. Almost there, folks. Uh, I'll be 47, so numbers for my B-Day would be just icing on the cake. Nice. January 13, 29th. January 13th. Tell me that's not a Friday. Uh, so router 5. Oh, it's known via BGP. Uh, so those routes are preferred. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Okay, those routes should always be actually... Yeah, so we've got a, a routing issue here. And the easiest way to fix that, I think, is just to say... <laughs> okay, I hear you, man. Best birthdays. Um, so we're going to say router BGP 65002 distance BGP routes external to the AS are going to be 150. Oh. Routes internal to the AS 200. We shouldn't really have any local routes here. But let's do that here and a router four. Distance. BGP, we're going to say 150, 200. Clear IP BGP star. We basically created a, a routing loop. But let's see if that's fixed now. Show IP route 10.1.1.1. So OSPF should be preferred now, which it is. And now we should be able to ping it all the way from over here. Uh, he should redistribute. Oh, we might have to reset OSPF uh, BGP here as well. Clear IP BGP star. Clear IPB, uh, clear IPBGP star. And here. All right, show IP route. There's our tens. Okay, good. So now ping 10.1.1.1. There we go. Well, at least I knew how to fix it. That's that's something anyway. Ping 30.1.0.11. Yeah. All right, full reachability. Now we just need to save the lab. We're gonna shut down the VM in Azure. And this afternoon, we'll be able to do some PFR. And I can get some lunch, y'all. I haven't had breakfast. I'm not like super hungry, but uh, you know, being on keto, you don't really get, if your body's right, you shouldn't really get that hungry. Uh, just a roll for any new peeps on the Tamer YouTube study for CCNA. David Baumel shares some awesome packet tracer labs every Friday on his YouTube channel. Definitely check them out and have a fun lab every day. Yeah, I think, uh, then they call those free lab Fridays. That's cool that he's sharing those. Uh, 
I think that's awesome. All right, so we're going to export all of our configs. That's a good place to start, right? You just want to say, yeah, I don't have any materials yet. Where can I just get started on the CCNA? Well, go back to his videos. Uh, check out Free Lab Friday videos, and that'll definitely give you somewhere to start, right? Yeah, sir, David Bumble is inspiring one day and give back like he does. Man, he is so awesome. Okay, our export should be close to being finished here. Let's open up Azure. Get ready to shut down this VM. Export all done. Cool. Uh, let's go to startup configs, turn these all on. You don't have to do this, but I always do this just as a safety precaution. And we will stop all nodes. Good. Close lab. And I'm actually going to do an export here just for grins. This is sort of a little backup here. Okay, then we're gonna sign out and shut down the virtual machine. Remember folks, in Azure, it's not enough just to do a shutdown on the, like from Bash. It's kind of like uh, VMware, right? You have to stop it from, I mean, not kind of like VMware, but anyway. You stop it from the portal or from a CLI to get it to uh, stop the billing clock. We shall see you on the flip side, man. Eat some steak potatoes. You're looking thin, lol. <laughs> steak is actually uh, on the keto diet, man. I can eat as many steaks as I want. Um, and I do them by from time to time. That's usually what I order from restaurants. Love me some steak. Thanks, folks. I think we're going to drop it here, in it here. Thanks for all, everybody in the chat. Hope you all have a good rest of your Saturday. But don't go away. We will be back here. I'll post. I might even post on Twitter, but I'll definitely post on Discord when we're going to fire up the actual PFR lab. So you all have a great uh, lunch, and we'll see you on the flip side. Thanks for joining us here on the Land Tamer stream.